Football Insider, as always, Brian Jenkins, our head football coach, sits here with us. Coach, we got some guests here today. We got alumni and boosters mm -hmm. and season ticket holders, and I think it's great uh, as the Wildcat uh, faithful continue to show up wherever we show up. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to buy some lunch for them today, but <laughs> nonetheless, uh, right. <laughs> you hear them back there? Who, oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Uh, that's, I know who that is over <laughs> there in the corner. <laughs> but, uh, Coach, 48-21, you win the Biker Classic over Savannah State right. and clears the deck now for what everybody wants to talk about is the, the big game, the cats and the dogs, this weekend, homecoming in Daytona Beach. Before we talk about that, let's talk about 48-21, where the cats come out and score uh, four quick touchdowns against Savannah State mm -hmm. to pretty much seal the doom of the Tigers, and then you coast it from there. Right. The number one thing we want to do is come out and play well early, hopefully uh, secure the lead, and then, you know, back off a little bit and rest some starters so we can be fresh and 100% and, uh, you know, at full pace when we get ready to face South Carolina State. Were you worried about this being a trap game or that you would not have uh, the team operating on full cylinders if immediately after hitting, leaving the locker room? Well, yes and no. You know, uh, I wasn't fully worried, but I, I didn't want the guys to feel like we had to play down a level. Okay. You know, I wanted our guys to come out and play at our level and play the way we play football. So, you know, yes and no, I was, I was a little concerned uh, about this game. Savannah State, a much improved football team, and you said that earlier mm -hmm. uh, in the week, and they proved that. Didn't right, they? and that's what, that's what brought along the concern, because they are much improved. Uh, Coach Ernest is doing a tremendous job with that team, and you can see it. And I tell you what, they're going to have a couple of victories in the conference before it's all over. You predicted it. Let's take a look now at the highlights from the 48-21 Biker Classic win, BCU, over Savannah State. Jackson takes the snap, wants to throw. It's a little out pass to Jackson. Jackson at the 10, the 5, for the end zone, touchdown! He's got some pressure. Now flushes out of the pocket. He will be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. It's up top. And he snap, and now the handoff to Jackson. He breaks it over the right side across the 40. Still on his feet, 45. First down. Snap and the handoff. No, Williams keeps it. Left side, first down and more across the 40. Cuts it up the sideline. Fourth and goal, Wildcats. One yard line, 7.30 to go here in the first quarter. Handoff is to White. He walks into the end zone. Wildcat territory for the first time this afternoon. Handoff is to Daniels, and he is hit in the backfield. Tears up. Eddie Poole now in the ball game to the right. Williams hands off to Gary White. White's got some room across the 15, the 10, the 5, all the way down and into the end zone. Touchdown, Gary White. That's a good looking job right there by Gary White. He's got three receivers to the right. Eddie Poole is in the game and splits to the left. Williams takes the snap, pitches White to White, right to White. Across the 40, 45, first down across midfield. From the shotgun, takes the snap. Over the middle, quickly got it at the 20. Pistol on the option, gives it to White. White to the 10, White to the 5. White barely toward the end zone. Touchdown, Gary White. Four. Left side, and uh, Eisenhower Jackson is back in the backfield. Williams will keep it. Got some room, 30, 35, 40. First down, 45. Eddie's finally dragged down. Splits two receivers, right one left. It's a handoff, left side. And it fooled nobody. Down in the backfield goes the quarterback, Crooney. Kevin up. So, hey, the snap is fumbled. This ball is loose in the end zone. The Wildcats are saying they recovered it, but the official is blowing it dead at the two-yard line. White goes in motion. Jackson in the backfield. It's to Jackson. Isidore plowing toward the end zone. He's in. Touchdown, Wildcat. 5.31 to go. The handoff is right side. Stuffed up by the meat of that defensive line for the Wildcats. Rooney will hand off to Beals. And Beals stacked up after a yard and a half. See if that's what I saw. There goes his Beal money for the night. And they're going to try to fake it on fourth down, and they don't get it. Here's the snap to Williams. Wants to roll to his left. Now cuts it back right. He'll keep it. Breaks it outside across the 45. First down midfield. Williams still on his feet. Breaks another tackle. And across the 45 and out of bounds. Williams on the throw to the right side. It's complete across 38. Breaking a tackle. Jomo Gordon down the right sideline. 30, 25, 20. 
Williams takes a snap. It's Jackson. Cutting for the right side off tackle. Touchdown, Isidore Jackson. He has now tied Jimmy Russell for fourth place all time in career rushing touchdowns well, here at Bethune Cook. That's good looking right there. The throw is Prunty. He's under pressure. He rolls to his left. Now still wants to throw. Now he's going to have to run, and he's chased out of bounds near the 30 yard line by LeBrandon Richardson. It's the throw. Launches one hit as he throws. A wounded duck is picked off. Picked off by Jarkevis Fields. Fields across the 20. Quentin Williams from the pistol will take the snap and throw out quickly to the tight end. We don't see that very often. Likely if the safety is going to cheat up that way. Instead, it's a drop play to carry White. White across the 30, 25, first down. On first and 10, wants to throw long. Down the middle of the field, intercepted. Picked off by Tim Burke at the 20. 25, 30, back across the middle of the field, 40. Finding a seam the left sideline, across midfield to the 40, and he's finally dragged down. Waters will throw right. There's Eddie Poole. Eddie's got it at the 35 and fights for extra yardage. On the draw play, Michael Jones. Got some room left edge across the 30, 25, 20. He busts it into the open, gets to the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. Larry Kelly here at Ritchie Cadillac, inviting you to stop by and discover why Cadillac is the top selling luxury brand in Volusia and Flagler counties. Cadillac CTS has the performance, design, and luxury that make Cadillac a luxury brand leader. The CTS family has been named to Car and Driver's 10 best list four years in a row and also has a five star safety rating. Test drive the Cadillac CTS today at Ritchie Cadillac on Nova Road in Daytona Beach or visit us online at ritchieautos.com. Welcome to my place. Come on, get in the game. Get in the game at Vince Carter's LPGA Boulevard at I-95, Daytona Beach. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, 13 institutions, all bringing the dreams of our student athletes to light. A premier NCAA Division I conference. We deliver excellence across the spectrum, uniting the diverse pursuits and talents of all our student athletes with the power of respect. For together, we are the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, achieving the dream. Do you want to wear what the real Wildcats wear? You can get your official BCU Wildcat team gear from the comfort of your own home online at bcusportshop.com. The official online store of BCU Wildcat Athletics. Save your gas money. Avoid the hassles in the mall. Click on bcusportshop.com and get the best in Wildcat wear delivered to you in just 48 hours. bcusportshop.com, the official Wildcat online store. load of fans in the background and having fun here and and coach when you look in terms of of the the biker classic the 48 21 victory you said in the previous segment you wanted to come out and establish some momentum early you did that right we right we did and uh, we had our plays all set on what we wanted to run and uh, our main thing coming to this game was you know to be disciplined to be mm -hmm. focused and to be detailed and uh, we wanted to play with energy and our guys did that, and it was good to see that from our team. Let me, let me be honest with you, Coach, uh, because the, the, the game looming this weekend was on the mind of you and even your team, but they had to take it one day at a time and right. stay in the moment. And, you know, I got to give your kids credit. 
they were able to do that. Right, definitely. We talked about it all week. Yeah. You know, we didn't hide anything uh, from them. You know, our guys know uh, what this week is all about. And, uh, you know, I just presented it to them and told them, hey, but we're not to that point yet. We still have a moment that we have to take care of that's going to prepare us for the no next moment to come. Well, Coach, for the next few moments, let's talk about how efficient you were running the football, particularly mm -hmm. Early in the ball game, Quentin gets to start. Right, Quentin gets to start, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we've been efficient running the ball because our offensive line have been playing very well. Mm -hmm. And Coach John Powers has done an exceptional job preparing those guys and getting the game plan ready uh, in our run game part of our offense. And and our guys just have done a, a great job of understanding our scheme and being able to go out and operate it. You get to sit two guys, Coach, who have played uh, a lot of plays this year. Uh, Anthony Jordan, mm -hmm. you get a chance to rest him this game, and also Jackie. Jackie right. banged his hand up. Uh, against Howard University, and right. you didn't see the need to play him. Right, absolutely, and both of those guys could have went, you yeah. know, but we felt anytime we got a chance to rest a player where he can get uh, as close to 100% as possible, then we thought that was the right and the smart thing to do. On the other side of the ball, defensively, you, you managed to really just set the tone early. Mm -hmm. uh, Savannah State was trying to spread us out on the field and take advantage of mismatches but you had relentless pressure from the ends, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you were able to dictate the tone of the game. Right, our defense just played, you know, our aggressive defense as usual. Coach Jones and Coach Sims, Coach Williams and Coach Lane do a, do a tremendous job preparing our defense. And they just played as usual, and then uh, through studying our opponent, they knew every move that, that Savannah State was gonna make, and therefore we were able to counter, you know, on an effective end. Coach, you, uh, special teams-wise, you start the game off. Uh, Practice Preston Cleckley takes a punt mm -hmm. almost to the house. Right. Sets up the first offensive play of the game, mm -hmm. a touchdown, a screen pass to Isidore Jackson, uh, and we're off and running. Right, and that just goes to show our team is almost there to be able to operate fully on all cylinders and be able to be dangerous at all phases of the game. So to see that happen by Preston was, was really, really good to see. You still, in your opinion, have not played a complete football game. Right. I, I still don't think we've played a complete football game. And I think we can get better, and I, and I told our team that. You know, and it'd be very exciting uh, to see, you know, what type of team we really have when we could put together a complete football game. Over 400 yards total offense, Coach. You ran the ball for a couple hundred, uh, and you threw it for a couple hundred yards. You mm -hmm. threw the ball effectively for the second week in a row. Right. Uh, which proves to everybody that we can throw right. the football. We, we can throw the ball, you know, and, it, and it's just, you know, like I said, it makes me laugh when people think we, we can't because... Yeah. Uh, we've won ball games uh, running the ball. And I, like I, I tell everyone, we're going to do whatever we got to do to win. And if running the ball 100 times puts, in a, puts us in a position to win, we're going to do that. If throwing the ball 100 times puts us in a position to win, then we'll do that. We're going to do the necessary in order to win the ball game. Okay. We'll come back in just a few moments. And we're going to have a question and answer period from many of our fans and alums who are here at Vince Carter's with us. They'll get a chance to ask Coach Jenkins some football-related questions. And then we'll shift gears and talk about the elephant in the room, homecoming 2013. It's the Cats against the Dogs for first place in the media. Two great football teams going at it. Back in just a few moments. Welcome to my place. Get in the game. Get in the game at Vince Carter's, LPGA Boulevard at I-95, Daytona Beach. Larry Kelly here at Ritchie Cadillac, inviting you to stop by and discover why Cadillac is the top-selling luxury brand in Volusia and Flagler counties. Cadillac CTS has the performance, design, and luxury that make Cadillac a luxury brand leader. The CTS family has been named to Car and Driver's 10 best list four years in a row, and also has a five-star safety rating. Test drive the Cadillac CTS today at Ritchie Cadillac on Nova Road in Daytona Beach. Or visit us online at RitchieAutos.com. Do you want to wear what the real Wildcats wear? You can get your official BCU Wildcat team gear from the comfort of your own home online at BCUSportsShop.com. The official online store of BCU Wildcat Athletics. Save your gas money. Avoid the hassles in the mall. Click on bcusportshop.com and get the best in Wildcat wear delivered to you in just 48 hours. 
VCUSportshop.com, the official Wildcat online store. The Mideastern Athletic Conference, 13 institutions, all planned to win with dignity on and off the field. Sportsmanship, it's more than planned by the rules. It's planned smart. It's not just winning. It's taking each loss as a lesson. It's about respect for your opponent, for yourself. Because the game isn't just about the score. For our student athletes, the goal isn't just a line on the field. It goes beyond. The Mideastern Athletic Conference, sportsmanship is the way to play. This is Vince Carter. You're watching the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. Welcome back to Vince Carter for this week's episode of the Wildcat Football Insider. Lynn Thompson and Brian Jenkins sitting in with you. Normally, we do a player profile, and we've also had a chance to talk about coaches and take you in, in and out of the lives of some of our coaches, but we want to do something different this week. We're going to feature some of our fans and alums as they get a chance to ask Coach Jenkins whatever they want to ask him about the football program only, though, because uh, he's well-versed in a lot of things, but this is a football show. So we're going to go now to many of our fans and alumni who are here, and let's see what questions they want to pose to Coach Jenkins. Janny Brockington, class of 1972. Coach, at the beginning of the game and the cone is tossed and we win the cone toss, would you select to receive or defend? Well, I, I like to defend because uh, that's, that's been best for us this year in the past. I always like to receive. But because our defense is playing so well, we think if we can put our defense out there first to establish uh, the type of tempo we want in the game, then it'll benefit us in the long run. Also what it does, we believe it gives us a chance to get an extra series uh, in the game because we get the ball first after halftime. So that gives us a chance to reestablish the tempo that we want you know, after halftime as well. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is May Ola Williams and I'm a graduate of the class of 1977. And I know we're going to be playing South Carolina State for homecoming. How do we decide who we are going to play for homecoming? You know, that, that, that's a question that can go many different <laughs> ways. It, it falls into many different categories. Yeah. Uh, because we have so many things happening here uh, in Daytona, uh, the decision was kind of made because we had uh, the Oktoberfest this weekend and there were some economical things that were going to come into play. So in order to help our fans and alumni, we went to the next best available weekend, which just so happened South Carolina State fell on that weekend. If we would have went later, then it kind of uh, would have affected some people when it came to, uh, you the know, classic, some yeah. things with the classic. So therefore, you know, it just happened to fall this week against South Carolina State, which I'm happy and excited about because you got two top teams being able to play and uh, it, it packs the house even more for homecoming. Okay, thank you. I know it's gonna be an exciting game and I know we're gonna win. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marva Hopkins, class of 1981. Coach Jenkins, are you going to rotate quarterbacks on Saturday or are you just going to have one quarterback starting? Uh, that's yet to be, be known or be seen. You know, we're going to go into practice and practice with all of them, you know, uh, in mind to play and uh, depend on who can get the scheme down and, and what type of practice they have. We'll have a result on what our decision is on, on who we're going to play on Saturday. As long as we win. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Paula Reed, class of 1990. You sure, you sure it's 1990, Paula? Yes, I'm, I'm okay. positive. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Again in 2010 as well. All right. Tell us, what concerns do you have, though, regarding this contender? Because South Carolina State has been the team that we've had to beat the last three years in order to maintain our conference status. So with this contender being our homecoming um, component, what concerns do we have? What do we well, need to work on? Well, it's the same concerns I would have for every game. And, and it's just to make sure that our team is fully prepared and ready. You know, I don't have time to focus on our opponent because that takes away from our team. But my main concern is making sure our, teams doesn't, our team do, don't get distracted with the homecoming festivities, make sure we stay in the moment, and make sure we're, we're able and willing to go through the preparation process that's gonna have us, you know, uh, fine-tuned and ready to go on Saturday. All right, well, the, the Wildcat alumni will be there. Let's go Wildcat! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Coach, one question that they didn't ask yet, uh, and that's, do you have any free tickets? <laughs> no, I got no free tickets. <laughs> to my knowledge, it's, it's sold out and it's a standing room only event. Uh, Greg Smith, class of 96. And my question is uh, to Mr. Thompson. 
Mr. Thompson, do you think uh, we will ever move up to Division One football? Uh, well, most you, you, I guess you were talking about football bowl subdivision, the FBS. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see it in the near future because, quite frankly, the footprint is too large for the university right. and for the conference. Mm -hmm. Most people who attempt, and most universities who attempt to make that move, uh, are much larger universities that have a much larger fan base and the resources are virtually unlimited. Right. Uh, however, uh, what fans don't understand, and, and a lot of them don't realize, is that Bethune-Cookman University and the MEAC, we really are Division I universities. And uh, while we're not bowl eligible, we do uh, certainly compete for the national championship through the football championship subdivision. It's a great question, though, and that's Greg Smith, one of our longtime supporters, who raises that question. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, we're going to pause and we'll come back in just a few moments. Good questions, though, Coach. What do you think? Absolutely. Great questions. You know, and I'm sure there'll be a lot more uh, that folks will ask you when the tape stops rolling and when they're sitting here eating. But uh, we've got a whole lot of exciting stuff coming your way when we come back. We'll talk about the South Carolina State football team. We'll talk about our players of the game. And then we'll encourage all the Wildcat fans to come out and participate in homecoming. Those things and a lot more when we return. Larry Kelly here at Ritchie Cadillac, inviting you to stop by and discover why Cadillac is the top selling luxury brand in Volusia and Flagler counties. Cadillac CTS has the performance, design, and luxury that make Cadillac a luxury brand leader. The CTS family has been named to Car and Driver's 10 best list four years in a row and also has a five star safety rating. Test drive the Cadillac CTS today at Ritchie Cadillac on Nova Road in Daytona Beach or visit us online at ritchieautos.com. Welcome to my place. Come on, get in the game. Get in the game at Vince Carter's LPGA Boulevard at I-95, Daytona Beach. The Mideastern Athletic Conference, 13 institutions, all bringing the dreams of our student athletes to light. A premier NCAA Division I conference. We deliver excellence across the spectrum, uniting the diverse pursuits and talents of all our student athletes with the power of respect. For together, we are the Mideastern Athletic Conference, achieving the dream. Do you want to wear what the real Wildcats wear? You can get your official BCU Wildcat team gear from the comfort of your own home online at bcusportshop.com. The official online store of BCU Wildcat Athletics. Save your gas money. Avoid the hassles in the mall. Click on bcusportshop.com and get the best in Wildcat wear delivered to you in just 48 hours. bcusportshop.com, the official Wildcat online store. Can I get in here? Yeah, you yes, can get in here. One, two, three. Go, Go Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. We're here at Vince Carter's restaurant here in Daytona Beach. Vince and his family, his wife, I mean his mother and her husband are big supporters of the university. Uh, Jinx, big supporters of your team this weekend. Mm -hmm. We're two guys who really stood out. We're Brandon Richardson on defense. Carry White on offense. Let's talk right. about him. LeBrandon Richardson on defense is, is, is one of our top players, we believe. I mean, this young man shows up every day and practices all out, and he plays all out. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, uh, just, just an exceptional uh, young man off the field, a great family, you know, and uh, he's just doing what we ask him to do. He's a total team player and, and uh, a true captain and leader for our football team. Carry White, coach, this kid has come in and uh, smells the goal line. Right, he? Mr. Consistency. <laughs> I mean, and that's the way Kerry is. Yeah. Kerry's not worried about the limelight. He's, he's a true team player, and he just tries to do whatever he can do to help our football team. And thus far, he's doing an exceptional job at uh, helping us, uh, you know, achieve the victories that, that we've achieved thus far. Coach, let's go around the league now before we set up to talk about the last minute or so about the South Carolina State game. This past weekend, some surprising results. 
Morgan State goes down to North Carolina Central mm -hmm. and dominates. Right. That was a little surprising because I think North Carolina Central is a, is a good football team. Yeah. Not to take away from Morgan State, but, uh, you know, somehow, uh, you know, Donald has found a way to pull it all together, which he always has, mm -hmm. and, and down the stretch, uh, win some ball games. And But that was a, a little bit of a surprise for me. Uh, Hampton uh, goes over to Norfolk State, beats Norfolk State 27-21. And, and I tell you what, that, that kind of caught my eye, too. But knowing uh, Coach Rose the way I do, he's a competitor, and he's going to give you all he, all he got all the way down to the end. And somehow he's found a way to pull it together and keep his team, you know, fighting, and he was able to uh, go down and beat a good football team in Norfolk State. In Dover, Dell State was pitching a shutout to the last few minutes of the game, but they went over A&T 12-7. Not surprising to me, you know, because uh, you remember we were 7-7 seven, seven at halftime yeah. with this team. And a lot of people thought we were sluggish and everything, but I knew this was a good football team. And uh, I think people will start believing it now, now that they beat another good football team in, in A&T. The one that surprised a lot of people was Howard going down to Tallahassee and beating FAMU on FAMU's homecoming. Right. Uh, what do you think about that one? Well, you know, uh, it just goes to show the job that Coach Petty's doing while he's uh, sitting there for Coach Fleet. He still has that team fighting, and, and he has that team playing and still hungry to win. And uh, they went down into a hostile atmosphere and found a way to get a victory. Well, Coach, now that sets up this one this weekend. Two 3-0 and o teams in the league. Right. Uh, the visiting team has won. Uh, this game right. for the past three years, right. and you're looking to break that streak and mm -hmm. win at home on homecoming against South Carolina State. Right, right. I mean, we're, we're playing a, a, a good team in South Carolina State. They've always been one of the top teams in the conference, and uh, you know, they have another top team this year. Coach Buddy Pugh has always had a team that's going to be a contender for, for the title. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're really looking forward to it. We're excited about it, and uh, I just, I can't wait to get to that moment where that whistle blows and, and uh, we can come out swinging. Tell us about, in the last minute, tell us, say, take 30 seconds and talk about the week. Right. The excitement, all the activities, and how you have to keep the team focused. Well, definitely. We got to keep the team focused because there's a lot of people coming back. They want to see the team. They want to have access to the players, and uh, they want to come through the facility and different things like that. Yeah. So we just got to make sure we do a good, good job of keeping our, keeping our guys in the moment and understanding the moment. And if we can do that, which we've done a, a pretty good job at it thus far, we'll be okay. The moment he talks about is here. The two undefeated teams in conference play do battle this coming Saturday, 4 p.m. It's homecoming for the Wildcats at Municipal Stadium, and the dogs will come calling. Make sure you're there. And if you're not, log on to Cat Eye Network so you can catch the live video streaming or the Cat Eye Radio Network to catch it while you're traveling in your automobiles. It's going to be a tremendous affair. We invite all the fans to come out to the parade that morning, tailgate at the stadium, and be there for 4 o'clock for kickoff. For the first place rights in the MEAC title race, the Cats and the Dogs. For Brian Jenkins, the Wildcat, and for the Boosters and the Lums who are here at Vince Carter, I'm Lynn Thompson. We'll see you at homecoming this Saturday.